Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Steven Rosenberg. I'm the director of the MRI Guided Radiotherapy Program at Moffitt Cancer Center. And today we're going to be re reviewing an introduction to MRI Guided Radiation Therapy. Uh, you can see my email on the slide. If you have any questions about this talk or about uh, radiation oncology in general, please feel free to reach out anytime. And thanks again for being here. To talk about the role of MRI-guided radiation therapy in the treatment of cancer patients, I'm going to put that in the context of our departmental, departmental sort of vision of radiation oncology called FORT, or the Future of Radiation Oncology. And it's the personalization of cancer treatment through a combination of both radiation, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy for the betterment of patients. And to get there, we need new ways to visualize cancer, adapt treatment, and combine treatments in ways to better personalize therapy for uh, cancer patients. When it comes to describing MRI-guided radiotherapy, I like to use a basketball analogy, and this is a slide courtesy of a good friend of mine, Dr. Michael Facetti at the University of Wisconsin. And for those of you who know me know I'm a terrible basketball player, but I think it's an appropriate analogy. Uh, the person on your left, Fred Newman, um, had a very impressive feat he actually shot uh, blinded free throws, and he had the Guinness uh, World Book of Records for consecutive free throws blindfolded, which is 88. Now, that's extremely impressive. For those of you who, again, know me, um, five in a row for me is a very good day. When we think about imaging and radiation oncology, uh, what we used to do you know, 40, 50 years ago was very much you know, shoot the radiation sort of blind. We didn't have 3D imaging to help guide us, and so um, kind of you know consistent with what Fred Newman was. We were trying to make sure we were making baskets or we were hitting the target, but we didn't have, say, CAT scans to help us. As new imaging emerged, such as CAT scans, we had um, better imaging to make sure we were hitting our target more often. Now, Ted Martin, on the right of your screen, actually held the um, Guinness World Book of Records for consecutive free throws that were not blindfolded. Now, of course, you can advance the slide and to see what that was, but take a second and guess how many free throws he made in a row uh, not blindfolded. Five thousand two hundred twenty one consecutive three throws. That's amazing. And so although you can see what Fred Newman on your left uh, of your screen is very impressive, you know, when you can see what you're doing, when you can see your target, um, you can just be much more consistently accurate as you know Ted Martin is on the right of your screen. And so I think that's the analogy to MRI-guided radiation treatment. When you can see what you're doing, you're just going to be much more likely to hit the area that we want to every time. So here's examples from, for, for some imaging. You know, when patients usually undergo radiation planning, as many of you might be now aware of, they get a CAT scan where we design the radiation. When they get on the treatment table, they also get a repeat CAT scan to line up their anatomy to make sure that we're hitting the target. And that's called a comb beam CT. And on the far left of your screen, you can see a sort of an old technology comb beam CT. You can kind of make out the kidneys. You can see the bones of the ribs and the spine, but it's very difficult to see. And this is sort of old technology. Um, and you can see it would be very hard to make sure you're lining up to hit your target. In the middle of your screen is some uh, newer technology uh, with a you know, breath hold CT scan where you can, again, you can see the liver in some greater detail. You can see some of the kidneys, but still a lot of artifact from bowel and gas and other things. On the right of your screen is a uh, MRI image from a uh, MRI LINAC or MRI linear accelerator, and you can see everything in great detail. You can see the liver, you can see the pancreas and uh, the kidneys and the musculature of the back, and so it really gives things in sort of uh, uh, fantastic detail to uh, identify both normal anatomy and potential tumors. So this is an MRI-guided treatment unit. This is the Meridian unit, or the View Ray unit. It's an open-split solenoid 0.35 Tesla MRI scanner. And what does that mean? Is that, as you can see on the right of your screen, you can see that what's called the treatment gantry, or the linear accelerator where the radiation comes out, and the MRI gantry is split around that area. It's a low Tesla MRI magnet, so it's 0.35 Tesla. This is very different than some of the things that you sort of see with diagnostic MRIs, which are usually 1.5 Tesla or 3 Tesla. This is the Meridian or View Ray system. This is what we're going to talk about most today. It's the most commonly used system 
in the United States right now, but there are other systems, and we'll talk about them uh, a little bit later. But this gives you at least a general schematic of the machine. As I mentioned, uh, this again shows you a schematic, a little bit more technical detail with one side of the magnet sort of pulled away. You can see the patient sort of table there where the patients enter. And again, the linear accelerator is sort of uh, surrounded by the uh, magnet. Now, why is improvement in imaging so important? Um, and improvement in radiation technology is, and hopefully you're starting to learn on the rotation, is that radiation is used in the treatment of greater than 60% of people with cancer. It's used as a form of cure in many of these cases, and therefore improvements in radiation treatment may impact millions of people each year worldwide. Although we're going to focus today on the Meridian or View Ray system, I want you to be aware there are other uh, MRI-guided treatment units out there. Uh, one of the main ones is from Electa, which is a higher magnetic field, usually about a 1.5 Tesla MRI. And there's some other units in development in Australia that's around a 1 Tesla. There are pros and cons to using a lower versus higher uh, magnetic field strength. Some of them have to do with how the radiation moves through the magnetic field and how electrons move through that field as well. And so this is a great review by Dr. Hall, who's at the Medical College of the Wisconsin, who outlines the different machines and some of the advances of uh, MRI-guided radiotherapy. If you're interested in further reading, I do uh, put this towards the end of the talk so you can see the full title, but it's a great paper to sort of check out. This is what it looks like when a patient enters into the MRI-guided treatment unit. Uh, the uh, coils go on each side of the patient, and um, with that, the patient enters into the bore. Uh, with that, they end up with headphones because they get kind of loud in there. And a lot of times, we now have patients have visual goggles so they can see exactly what's going on inside their body. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. So this is the uh, 3D image we get when a patient comes out, uh, comes goes into the MRI-guided treatment unit. It's called a true V sequence. It's a mixture of a T2 and a T1 weighted image. What you can see on your screen is a tumor in the liver that's um, basically outlined in red. And you can see these what's called isodose lines or the dose of radiation to be delivered to that area. And what this is a 3D MRI image. And the MRI-guided radiation unit allows us to see the tumor and the anatomy in great detail. And we can also see changes and movement of things in real time. So we first get this sort of 3D image. We then also get a uh, what's called a cine, um, or actually a tracking of the tumor in, in a particular plane. So this is the cine of a patient with colorectal metastatic disease. You can see the liver is very bright. This patient was given EAVIST. And so with that, the hepatocytes take up this contrast agent making the um, liver nice and bright, but the colorectal metastatic lesion does not take that up. And so what you can see is at four frames per second in real time, we can watch the patient breathe and we can watch uh, the tumor and the normal anatomy move. The software actually um, tracks and picks up the tumor uh, when it's um, you know getting close to what we call red or the gating structure. And so the radiation is not gonna turn on until the tumor is in the exact right position. So what we do is that we coach patients and say, you know, take So again, the real-time Cine MRI is usually in the sagittal plane. You can see here um, some different anatomy. You can see the um, heart. You can see some distal stomach and bowel loops. And this is a tumor that's outlined in red of the uh, GE junction. And what's amazing to sort of see is that, as you can start to see, is that how much this tumor can move just with uh, normal cardiac motion um, and normal respiration. And again, that gating structure allows it so we will not turn on the radiation to the tumors in the exact uh, right position. And typically we set a threshold of 95% of the tumor within the gating threshold um, to basically turn on. You can see the tumor is tracked in this area. Now the tumor is in the correct position and the uh, treatment turns on. And actually by doing this, we can separate the tumor from some of the normal anatomy. You get a little bit further away from the heart because previously, what we would have to do is treat all the area the tumor could potentially exist, which is a much larger area. So this sort of slide shows the amount of motion we had of the tumor from where it was to where it is from when we're delivering the treatment. Allows us to be, again, very precise in our radiation delivery. 
Again, this uh, video will continue to loop around, so when you're done watching this video, go ahead and advance the slide. So what is adaptive treatment? I mentioned MRI-guided radiation is a form of personalized treatment, and the, one of the ways it allows us to do this is through adaptive therapy, which is changes in the radiation plan to account for physical or functional changes of a person's tumor or normal anatomy every day. It's a form of personalized medicine, and MRI allows us to see these changes and make adaptive approaches. So let me go through an example of what that looks like. So this is a gentleman with a tumor in his abdomen. I've outlined the tumor for you there in red, and there's bowel nearby, which is in orange. So the goal of any sort of radiation therapy in this setting is to deliver a very high dose of radiation to the tumor while sparing the bowel nearby. And obviously, you want to get as high dose as you can in there, but if you get to deliver too much dose to the nearby bowel, that could lead to a, a perforation or a hole in the bowel, or other side effects such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and other things that we don't want. So this is the patient's radiation plan that I just showed you. On the left of your screen is the original plan. The tumor, plus a little bit of a margin for error, is outlined in red. And you can see the bowel uh, outlined in blue. And you see these sort of color washings? These are radiation isodose lines, or how much dose of radiation things are getting. On the original radiation plan on the left of your screen, you can see there was an area of red that had an intimate relationship with the bowel. And that area had to be undercovered, where that dose washing didn't cover that area, otherwise we could overdose the bowel in that region. However, one of the days this patient came in, uh, on the right of your screen, the bowel had moved away from the tumor. So this again gave us an opportunity to better personalize therapy. And what we can do is re-adapt the radiation treatment. So this is showing uh, with the patient, while they were on the table, we were actually able to recognize the movement away of normal anatomy and normal bowel and re-optimize the radiation plan to give better dose of radiation to the tumor while still respecting that bowel constraint. And this is, a, again, another way of sort of personalizing therapy based on someone's anatomy of the day, which is really just uh, fantastic to personalize that therapy and deliver additional dose of radiation to tumor. This is called a dose volume histogram. As you're going through your radiation oncology rotation, you'll hopefully get a little bit better sense of this. And what this is hopefully showing, PTV just basically stands to the about stands for the tumor area that we're trying to treat. By adapting the radiation plan, you can see we've improved the radiation dose to the tumor over the original plan. So again, this form of sort of personalized uh, adaptive therapy with MRI-guided treatment hopefully, hopefully allows us to deliver better dose of tumor while sparing the normal organs. So is there any evidence that actually delivering uh, the sort of adaptive high-dose therapy improves outcomes? And this is a um, study that was done by multiple institutions, including WashU, University of Wisconsin, UCLA, and many others contributed to this on the right of your screen, showing pancreatic cancer patients who got high-dose adaptive therapy, where we were personalizing the radiation dose each day as much as we could versus the standard radiation, and actually saw an improvement in overall survival. And this is um, a retrospective study, which I've cited at the bottom of your screen. Very interesting, but is hypothesis generating only. But it did lead to a opening currently uh, an open current phase two clinical trial at multiple institutions looking at this approach to try and improve outcomes for pancreatic cancer patients. As I sort of have hopefully shown to you so far, is that the MRI guided treatment unit allows us to get fine detailed anatomy each day. Now at the left of your screen is a tumor outlined in red, which is of the GE junction uh, uh, at the very beginning of treatment. These tumors typically get around five to six weeks of a combination of chemo and radiation. And what you can see on the right of your screen is that same tumor outlined in purple. There's been a significant size reduction of the tumor during that time. So the radi these daily MRIs not only allow us to better target the tumor, but allow us to see responses we could never see before because we get such fine detailed anatomy. So can we use this information to, again, better personalize treatment? Well, this is the field of radiomics, which is playing a bigger and bigger role in radiation oncology. Dr. Gillies, who's at uh, Moffitt Cancer Center, has really helped pioneer this area where we're taking physical images, 
we're um, breaking them down to understand what's called tumor habitats or different parts of the tumor. And see so if we can understand how those features are changing over time and how that correlates with uh, local control, overall survival, and many other tumor outcomes. And so uh, this is another sort of exciting area where we're doing a lot of research about how the information we're getting every day uh, may uh, impact patients in the clinic. So in summary, MRI-guided radiation allows us to visualize the tumor and normal anatomy in great detail. We can gate treatment, which means that we don't turn on the radiation until the tumor is in the exact right position, as I showed you through those different sort of CINE videos. We may adapt treatment in real time to decrease radiation dose, to decrease radiation dose to normal organs while increasing dose to tumor. And finally, we can uh, use this imaging information um, to potentially understand response to therapy and better personalized treatment in the future. This is a great sort of uh, research area that many of us are participating in. If you are interested in uh, further uh, reading about this, as I mentioned, the paper by Dr. Hall and a consortium about um, the transformative role of MRI-guided radiotherapy in radiation oncology, and sort of a basic review on MRI for the radiation oncologist are listed here. I want to thank you all for being here and listening to the lecture. And again, if you have any questions about MRI-guided radiation or radiation oncology, please feel free to reach out to me at any time, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.